Repair time. What? Dude, look at this. The Super Nintendo. Alright, we're jumping back to 1991. Fixing a customer's order. This is James. James, thank you, James. He sent out his Nintendo SNES. He wanted me to do a complete full refurbish of it. So my plan is to replace the caps as well as the power input adapter in the back. So we'll get that fixed up and this will be a complete restoration. So let's get to it. There it is. AC input jack, new, brand new. Look at this, getting this installed. That easy, baby. Don't mind the scissors. Candy, dude. It's like a bouncy ball. Look at that. Taste test. Let's open her up. So, if you've never opened an SNES before, we have two, four, six screws that need to be removed. The bit that we'll be using is the security bit. I have mine as a 4.5. Look at that. And we're just gonna zoom away at these. Uno, dos, say, cuatro, cinco de mayo. Flip it over. Money shot. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, what is this? That's what dirty. All right. We're gonna take off our ejection cartridge ejector. There we go. Tweezer time. Sprung. Next, stop. What? Put your back out. Next, let's move the uh, Phillips head screws. You got two here, here, and one under. All right, then we can remove the shielding. Oh my, look at that hair. What the fuck? All right, I'm gonna get a bin to clean stuff in. All right, I got some water. I'm gonna start tossing these and letting them soak. I have it on the ground, so you won't be able to see it. Sorry. We want to remove these two screws holding the actual game cartridge slot. These screws will be a little bit longer, so make sure you're separating them accordingly. Now, we look at the back here, 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 and here. We have these three we have to get rid of. But just keep in mind the silver ones, all of them are the same length. There we go. All right, now I'm going to remove the ribbon cable holding the um, controller port. Wow, look at that. Shake, 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 shake. Set that to the side. Now we can actually remove our board. I'm gonna toss this entire thing into my soapy bath. We should take care of the lid as well. I'm going to remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. Perfect. Now that those are all removed, we can then look at this spring here. This is the, uh, the reset button. Oh, it's a little stiff, a little stuck. But that spring makes it so it keeps retracting so it can be pressed again and again but in this case the dirt is causing it to not retract so I'm gonna take small pliers take the little hook here and wrap it around oops so it pops off like that save this as well now we can remove this top piece I'm going to remove our power button. All you have to do is squeeze these two ends here and that will come out. There we go. Toss that in the box. Now we can remove our buttons by squeezing these tabs here, just like that. Power, 
bath. White slidey thing, bath, bath. Throw that in the bath as well. Squeeze these tabs at the end here. This will pop up this cover. This will allow us to remove the door very easily. Now I like to save or take the spring off as well as the, on this one. Throw both of these in the bath. There's these two little holes. Just push on them. Comes out like that. Got some wet residue, but no, now this can go in the bath as well. Perfect, now that everything's taking a bath, I'm gonna take a little cloth and clean my area here. Analyzing the board. We have our RGB O2 board. First what I like to do, remove this top shielding here. In order to do that, we're gonna flip it around and remove one, two, three, four, five screws. Just to keep in mind, we have two different sizes of these screws. Again, the silver ones are longer. So what we can do is color code which ones should be separated from each other. To remove our reset switch, or our power switch, sorry, by gently tugging. Put that off to the side. We need to also remove this Phillips head that's connecting our voltage regulator. Head. Now we can remove the shielding. off our pin connector. Now this is very hardened on there because of all this gunk. So I'm gonna take some IPA, 91%. Just kinda sprinkle it on there. Let it soak a little bit. I've done it like this. All right, we're finally back. So after some research, and a good 30 minutes of trying to get this loosened up, it's all just one piece. The RGB boards must be completely different. So far, all I'm used to are the GPM boards. And we have this, this is under our pin connector so we can take this off and remove and clean it but the rgb boards are completely different and i had no idea so thankfully i did some research before i started really prying at that damn thing what i did was i took my solder pump and i just took the back pins all off i just suctioned them all off do that if you have an RGB board. If you do not, what you can do is just remove those two white, those two silver screws, then you're able to remove the pin connector, shimmy it off. This is what I've been used to. Now that we know that, let's give this board a nice good old scrub. I'm just gonna take my toothbrush and trusty IPA. I also like to periodically damp or press the cotton fibers from the cloth into and scrub around. Let's get to cleaning, baby. All right, now, before we take off the caps and replace this back panel, I wanna test it. We never tested it. So let's make sure this thing works and we'll actually get back to recapping and getting that done. I spent a few minutes cleaning this bad boy and I'm gonna show you guys me actually reinstalling this to the board. So let's do that. Let's see if we can line these, oh, there we go. 
check to make sure we have all the pins in. Looking good. Let's solder it. All right, I'm gonna grab my flux. Apply a little bit to this. Now we can come in with our soldering iron. Got a little mini guy here. All right, we are done with that. Not bad. I'm gonna get some IPA. I'll get the clean in it. Put my back here. And we can now test it. All right, do you not turn it on? Let's see if our fuse is blown. I think I know why. It might help if I plugged in my... Oh my god. Now let's check if we have power. Would you look at that? We got our 13 volts. We got light. Let's turn on the TV. Super Madden! Oh my god. Plug that in. Possibly the best Super Nintendo game. Alright, it works! Okay, now that we know it works, if it doesn't in the end, we know it's my fault. So, let's get this off. Let's just desolder these two points with some desoldering wick. Get my flux out. Put it on there. Get the desoldering. Oh, you can smell the 1980s dirt and grime just stick into this. Or 1990s, sorry. <coughs> I was over-exaggerating. I apologize. All right, there we go. There's just a tiny bit of solder on there that just kept keeping it from coming out of the holes. Oh, we should be able to kind of pull up. There we go. And now that we have this cleared out, I can get it a nice, give it a nice cleaning. Let's open her up. Yeah, look at that. A lot cleaner. This has to be under the RF. This has to be on top of the multi out. And you also have to pry these up. There we go. Tacked with that solder. All right. So now that we're a little closer to the board, we all can see the caps that we need to replace. So here's what we got. Here's some surface mount. All these, most of these are surface mounts, and then we have our big. Uh, I think this is, yeah, one thousand microfarads. And then our miscellaneous ones. So I'm gonna put this in my little drawer right here. So we have a 2.2 50 volt down here. I'm gonna turn on my heat gun. And we are going to remove one by one. So I start with this 2.2 surface capacitor. Just grab on it tight softly. Let's move this so it doesn't burn up. Apply a little bit to my toothbrush. Clean it up. And then I also want to get some desoldering wick and actually clean up those pads. Nice. Those pads are looking way better. Go back over it. Clean up this area. Perfect. Apply some flux. Some fresh solder to the pads. Not too much, don't need much. Turn my heat gun back on. Let's apply the new surface capacitor. Oh, I'm shaking. All right, I like that. Nice. Give it a final cleanup. And that is one capacitor replaced. Move on to the top ones. 
Now I got these two in. Let's get some IPA. I'll do maybe a few more on here for you guys. All right, all surface mounts have been attached <clears throat> and are good to go. I'm proud of that. Proud, 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 proud. Let's get it all nice and clean. So we have a 20, 220 microfarad. That's what this one was. I think this is the same thing. Yep, 220. So you have two of those. One, two, and we have 471. Let's replace those two blue ones. I'm gonna see if I can just shove it down there. Let's get some solder wick. Solder wick right up here. Get on this side. There we go. Now keep in mind, when you are replacing the capacitors with legs, make sure they're the right orientation. The white line means negative. And we're going to bend these legs. Bend, bend. So that stays in place, and then we can add our solder. There we go. There we go. Now we can take some wire cutters, clip both these legs off. All right, now let's just repeat the process for the other cap. There we go. Next, I'm gonna add our 1000 microfarad. Solder wick is our friend. Bend our pins. All right. I'm happy with this, very happy. I'm gonna plug it up. We're gonna look at the screen, see if it works. See if I messed it up. Guess what we're playing. <laughs> Madden! Plug her in. Can we play one of the greatest games ever made? On the SNES. No. Oh. Yeah. I tried to reseed it. Madden. Oh, I hit it. I want to play Madden. Let me play Madden. Yes. I'm super happy this worked. Hopefully you can hear the Mario in the background. Super nice and chill. But everything seems to work. I'm gonna test the AB is the RF as well, but now that this is all complete, completely refurbished, I'm going to assemble our case pieces. We're gonna throw this in there and we're done. So let's move on to that next. I have all the top cover pieces over here. Up here too. And I want to focus on getting rid of these scuffs. I'm try some baking soda and vinegar. You can scrub it down. All right, that's looking really good. We can do one final clean down once we get everything assembled. It'll also be a lot easier to put some elbow grease, grease into it. So we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna start assembling. So first we're gonna put our buttons in there. Go in here, the one with the big square. That's our power button. And all you have to do is just push the tabs in. There we go. Just like that, we might as well put this little piece on. It's the back part here. It just clips in just like so. All right, so our door, we want it so that the spring is facing the little part under the door. So it's flush like that. And then that little hole is where we put the arm of the, of the door. Just like that. So it just sits there for the top. SN SNES logo. Pop it between the two butt or slide-in buttons. Just like so. Final piece. Push on um, through here. 
a little white. This is what actually pushes the reset down. Okay. Just like that. And we can lay it down and then install five, or I think it's, the, yeah, seven screws. There we go. And that is our top case done. That looks super, super nice. So much better than what it was. Bottom does not need much. All we need to do is just put in this little, I guess, bolt holder. I don't know what you call that, but that just sits in there like that. And then our little drawer, the exit drawer. Pop in like that. Let's get everything put in. Next, I want to move on to this. What is this? I'm going to squirt on it. All right. With all that said and done, I think it's ready. I think we're ready to squirt on it to put this bad boy together. So off camera, I put both shielding on the, for the heat sink, as well as this that sits in front of the pin connector. And I did some, a little bit of tidying up. I also cleaned with the IPA at the bottom of the motherboard. So, oh, and, and, as well as uh, the controller port, I completely cleaned this up off camera so we are ready to put it together so first motherboard place it in there very gently we grab two silver screws in the back next i'm gonna put two more silver screws but this is gonna be right by the actual pin connector. Next, we're gonna do the eject button. Fortunately, I was still not able to get this residue off. It's completely stained inside the actual plastic. So, thankfully, this is all gonna be hidden, but this is hardly noticeable. It's a lot more noticeable on camera than it is in person. So I'm not too worried about it. Now for this, we want tall or the long arm to be inside the consoles like this. Put that on and find the little hole at the bottom and just shimmy, shimmy, shimmy it in. There we go. Just wanna push this in a little more just to make sure. Next, we're gonna add the switch. Nintendo Switch. Just like so, but before we attach that, there is two screws. I want to get to right here. There's also one we need to come for in the back here. Finally, well not finally, we can add the switch on then. Now, we can put the controller port in, insert the ribbon cable under the eject button, just like so. It just slides in very nicely. Okay, you carried away here. I forgot about the eject or the reset button. Spring, so I'm put that in right there. Slide it over top. Now our eject button slides back into place. Put the cover on top. Flip it over. Install our six security bit screws. And that is that. Let's test it and we can call it a day to our new power jack. Multi out. Make sure she still turns on. We're doing Madden. She works. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching my complete tutorial on recapping as well as fixing that input jack. And I will see you next time.